Hello everyone, welcome to Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bisque, and this is Brenda, and we're painting live tonight at 7 Central Time. And we are working on our October box, which is our fall harvest, and our scarecrows. So last week we had left off where we were dry brushing all our yellow areas, the straw, the sunflower, with mustard. And we had just um, left off with the hat, or the top of the hat, the straw coming out. And then I posted a picture if you wanted to do homework all week, you could catch all your yellow areas up to that um, that area or that degree of color. So that is what I also did to help save time. But um, I stopped at that point so you could see what it looks like. So this is our little girl. And this is our boy. So he's about the same as the girl. So I left about one third of the black showing, which gives you depth and dimension to your piece. So now these are colors that I chose for my pieces, but you're more than welcome to use any colors you like. If you may not like the black undercoating, base coating, you could use our dark brown, or you could even paint it all out and antique it. There's plenty of ways to do things, not just one way, and my way is not the only way. This is just the way that I did it for our, my subscription box, and if you want to follow on along and paint the same way, that's great. If you want to change it up, that's great too. So for now, we are going to, for from this point, we are going to add some highlighting to all our straw areas. And to do that, we are going to use our Daffodil Doc Holiday DH01 Daffodil. And that's we're using acrylic stains and we're dry brushing. And actually, I wanted to get a little bit more mustard on here yet, um, just to pick up where we left off so that, just to show you where we were at. And I just grabbed a little bit of the mustard off of my foil, and you can use the foil, or you can use a tile, or a plate. I like the foil because I can throw it away. And then I'm using my paper towel, and you could use to brush my brush out on. You could also use a paper bag, a coffee filter, um, some people use a cotton cloth. Um, whatever works for you is fine. We're, we don't get picky like that. You, just, you do what works for you. So I just want to get a little more mustard on my sunflower. And I'm just brushing across my texture, trying to keep the black, some of the black. We want some of it left. We just wanted it a little bit more mustard and I wanted to pick up where we left off so you guys could see. So again, I'm just brushing across my texture because that way the black stays in the crevices. If you go with with it, you're going to lose all of your black shading. So I'm just grabbing my mustard and brushing it out and then brushing across my texture. And you want to make sure you get your edges as well. And you want to get the backs. Same with your straw, you want to get everything. So we're going to try to dry brush just a little bit more mustard on here. That's a good straw, base coating straw color. So I'm leaving my black in my crevices and closer to where the stem is overlapping my sunflower petals because your lower area that's being overlapped is always darker than your top area. So we'll get just a little bit more on him and then we'll be ready to go to our next color. So I'm going to take a quick look and see hello. Who, who do we have watching tonight? Well, we have with us Connie, Lisa, Carol, Marie, Linda. So hi everyone, glad you guys joined us. Is everyone working on their projects? Is everyone enjoying the cool fall weather? It's supposed to get down into 27 here tonight. I'm just going to get a little more color on mustard on here.
And you want to get the bottom of your straw too that's around his hair. That's for his hair, so you have to tip tip the piece up a little bit. So that's about where I want him. He's equal to the girl now. And I'm going to let him dry and I'm going to grab the girl. And then I'm going to grab our daffodil Doc Holiday DH01. Give it a little shake. Put a little bit on my foil. And I'm going to continue using the same brush. And I'm just going to go up into the edge of my yellow and brush it out on my paper. And now I'm going to lightly brush my straw just to give it some highlight. And again, I want to do about a third less color of this um, daffodil than what I did with the straw. You don't want to completely cover up your straw. Or the mustard color, I'm sorry. You don't want to completely cover up the mustard color. You want that there for shading. And it, you can decide at this point if you want her hair. I guess her hair would probably be the same color because it's the straw as well. But if you want your sunflower to be the mustard color or if you want it more yellow. Um, the one that I did, it also has some orange in the around the center. But then we have the dark center and then we use the glitter in the center too. Um, sometimes the sunflowers are um, burgundies and different colors. So you can decide if you want the yellow or not. We're going to go with the yellow. I'm just going to dry brush back and forth again across her texture of her hair, grabbing my yellow and brushing it out. I know a couple ladies messaged me that they have trick-or-treat tonight, so they might not be joining us. But trick-or-treating should be fun with all the kids. So I'm just brushing back and forth across, and now I want to change from going this way. I want to go across my hair texture in the back as well. I don't want to go with it. And we're just going to keep working our way around. So did everyone get to see the unboxing video of our November box? Courtney released that this week. We made it, we recorded it on Saturday, I think it was. It went to her house. So that was interesting. We had a couple bloopers, but in the end we got it. She says she's saving the bloopers. We thought the camera was going and it wasn't. So that was a good one. And then we had to redo it. So I'm still just using my daffodil and I'm going back and forth across my texture. Just getting that straw a little bit brighter. So our November box, if you watched, it's the um, Noel Christmas tree and the base. And then a vintage truck that can sit on a shelf or a table or a desk. And you could actually put your Christmas in July Christmas tree next to him. And then the other one is a Christmas tree, or a truck with a Christmas tree in the bed. And that one is an ornament. Although if you didn't want it to be an ornament, you could just put a light in that string hole and use it and we'll go through all that when we um, get to painting those boxes including wiring the tree um, so I'm just getting my straw yellower more bright and you can do this however degree of brightness you like and you want to make sure you get it on the back side here too And we can do, if you're not a subscriber and you would like um, that November box, we 
do have a pre-order on our Brenda's Brush Strokes and Bisque. You can go in and pre-order it, and then that'll reserve your box. Courtney thinks we're down to three that would be able to ship on the fifth. Um, we'll have more after that. I just have to keep cleaning and pouring and firing them. So if you want to reserve one, just um, just go on Brenda's Brush Strokes and Bisque dot com and you can do the single purchase to get a November box if you just want a single purchase or if you want to subscribe you can message us and Courtney can set you up as a subscriber so I'm getting that straw on, on the hair pretty much to where I want it and now I'm gonna go up to the sunflower and the straw on the hat and again I'm just gonna go across my texture and I'm not going to do the inside oh about maybe three eighths of an inch a little more than a quarter because I want to do that with the orange so we'll just do the bright yellow out on the two-thirds out further and then we'll save the inside for the yellow or the I'm sorry the orange and you can do it all yellow too if you want. It doesn't matter. You can do them whatever whatever color you like. We're not picky. If you wanted to do one yellow and the other one the burgundy, that works too. So I don't know if we have football games going on tonight or not, but sometimes we do on Thursdays. You can see how the yellow is highlighting that compared to the um, straw that hasn't been yet and then I want to turn it and we want to do the back and those edges so I've had a few picture people send pictures of their Halloween boxes and everyone's done a really great job it's really nice to see everyone's work and to know that I've helped you along We're just dry brushing the back of the sunflower. And now we'll go up here on the straw and do the same thing. We're still going across our texture. Let's see, what else is going on? Well, we're pouring, cleaning, and firing for those boxes. Oh, and our molds for our December box arrived. Um, so we have to take a little road trip down to Beloit and go get those. And that theme is snowmen. So that hopefully everyone likes snowmen. That seems like a pretty good topic usually. So we're just dry brushing across our texture here and getting our highlighted with this daffodil, making it look more straw colored ish. And I'll go back to my sunflower while the straw on the hat's drying. And we're going to grab a little more. Hopefully, the weather is good. I haven't looked to see if it's good weather or not. And we might stop at one of the shops on the way that we, I haven't been to yet. So that might be fun if we have time. We're just brushing around and around. I'm working on making some chalk. We'll see how that turns out. And then it can be um, hopefully I can color it to the colors that I like and then we'll see what happens. I have it mixed up and we'll see if it stays together or it's so hard that you can't get the chalk off the chalk piece or what it does. I'm not really sure. So it's never dull here. There's always something going on. I'm just trying to get the tips more of my sunflower and the tips of my 
cat. I'm going to turn it so you can see it. And we ordered our glazer order for our supplies for our boxes yesterday. So that should be here um, probably Tuesday, I'm guessing. And we will have the, um, we ordered some more Duncan paint, so we'll have the full line of that, and that'll be on our website, too. Right. Courtney's got it already on there. We're just waiting for it to get here. Oh, oh we already have all of it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought we were missing a couple metallic. So she says she's got it all on there already, so she's ahead of me. So now we'll let her sit, then we'll switch over to our boy, but I can show... You heard next to him how much the daffodil has highlighted that now. So I'm still going to grab the daffodil and just dry brush on all the straw areas. Just keep going across, across each one. You want to be a little careful by the face, but if you get it on the face, you can go back and touch it up. See, I'm pouring orders, working on those, cleaning greenware. And I have two craft shows a week from this weekend, which I'm not really quite ready for, but we'll make do. I'm just going across the texture. I turned him so I can get underneath the bottom there just a little bit but not too much because you still want that darker under there but just the very edge of it's getting the daffodil like the edge the very tip of of the bottom there and then we'll bring it back up to the side and then as it gets closer to the hat it can be darker again because that would the hat would be creating a shadow and you just want to keep turning him, going back and forth. Come back to the arms. Because that's probably dried by now. And we'll just keep working him around. Come back to the side of the face now. Just keep going across it. Keep building it up. I'm gonna hit my screen here to see if we gained anybody. Oh, we did. So we now we have Shirley and Ann. Welcome, you guys. Glad to have you, Lisa. So we'll get some more on this arm over here. Um. So Cordy says, "How do I know when it's enough?" Is that what someone asked, or you're just asking? Mm -hmm. She's asking. Um, well, you can see that the hair now has the daffodil on it, and then the sunflower doesn't. So you really want, you want it, this is more of the color of straw. And sunflowers usually aren't this drabby of a color, so I, I do want more on there. It's kind of a personal preference how much yellow you would want. And you don't want so much that you cover up all your black and your mustard. We'll have her painting yet. Probably not, she says. Sounds like she's stuffed up with a cold yet this week, though. Getting one. Getting one? I thought you were getting over one. And we can go up to the hair. And just keep brushing across it. And I just grab my daffodil and brush it out so the brush is basically dry and not loaded with a lot of paint. Courtney doesn't know it yet, but she's going to be turning the penguin mold so I can catch the penguin as he falls out of it. 
kind of a two-person job. Huh? That wasn't too big, though. <laughs> yeah, it's the penguin stack, and it's kind of hard to get him out by yourself without crashing him, so it's easier if someone can um, turn the mold and then I'll have another person catch it. So I, I'm the catcher, and she'll be the turner. So again, I'm just going on my tips and on my sides, the edges. Same with the straw and the hat. You want to get on the side here, too. And then you want to look it over and make sure it's what you got, what you want. And everyone has personal preference, so do what, do what makes you happy. If you don't want it this bright, don't make it this bright. Now my sunflower's a little dull yet, so I'm going to get some more color on him yet. And I'm just brushing across that texture and a little more of that black gone, I think. Just a little bit brighter. And we'll come to the back and get the back of the petals again. Get this top up here. It looks a little dark. So we had lots of rain again this week, lots of wind, but now the cold is setting in. I have dahlia bulbs and calla lily bulbs in the garage that I'll have to bring in tonight because 27 degrees, they're not going to like it, and they'll be frozen. They won't be no good. So he's looking about where I want him. I think I'll get a little bit more up here on the top because that would be brighter because the light would be hitting that more. And I'm still just going across it. So he's about where I want him to and I'll um, lay them side by side. They look they look comparable. Maybe I need a little more on his straw on his hands. Did anyone make real scarecrows for fall? I know a lot of people do. I don't. You just don't have time. Pot one. What? The pot one. Pots? Oh. Yeah, you did. Oh. Well, I guess I made pots, pot scarecrows out of clay pots, but not this year. Those were pretty cute. Yeah, the terracotta pots we made into scarecrows and snowmen. So he's looking pretty good. I think we'll call that good. So now I'm going to go to my... Um, we're going to do our shirt color. And I did the... Well, let's see, I think I did the medium brown. Which is the Duncan OS 471 medium brown. So I'm going to give that a little shake. And I'm going to do that next because the, the shirts are further lower than the their pants or the, her jumper. So if we would do the pants first, then our shirt color would get on our pants. But it's okay if our shirt color gets on the pants because then the pants color will cover it up. So I'm using my medium brown. You can use any colors you want. You just kind of try to keep them more neutral and um, browny colored, I guess. So let's see, I probably want a smaller brush for this little job. I think I'm actually going to go with my flat, my 3 Royal and Langlico flat. And I think a 3 flat actually came in your box this month, right? Nope, 5 flat and a 5 round. Yeah, That's so next month that you'll get the 5 flat. The 3 flat. The 3 flat, I'm sorry. So you just want a, a smaller size brush. A three round or a three flat would work. Um, they've already had that one. They've been buying boxes. They have the three round. You probably have your boxes. three round if you've been buying the boxes. That would be a good one to use. I'm going to use the, the flat because I already have the paint in it now. And even with the flat, you still brush, um, just dry brush like, like normal back and forth. 
Um, this is kind of a little smooth surface, so I'll probably do my little half circles. And that's a little too wet, so i got to brush that out. And I'm just coming right up to the neck. And I'm trying to avoid getting some on the pants if I can. We'll just brush back and forth here. We'll try to let the crease or the pants and the sleeve meet dark because that'll be that crevice so you have nice shading in there. And you could use a, a larger brush on those sleeves if you wanted. And I'm just brushing back and forth. And we'll go right over the little um, twine that's on his um, sleeve. We'll come back and touch that up later. It's just easier to go right over it. And then you just keep turning them and going across your texture. And we come right around to the back. So normally I have it sitting on the table, but we have the camera set up different tonight. So I'm trying not to actually dry brush on the table and make the sh um, camera shake all over the place. So we were a little challenged tonight with setup, but that's all right. We we got it. I'm just brushing back and forth, going across my texture right down to my tip of my sleeve. And with a little brush like that you can get closer, like I can get really close to my straw um, without getting all the straw off full of, full of the medium brown. You can just kind of nudge it right up to it. We'll just keep going around and around, just dry brushing it out. Try not to get it on too thick at once like I did right there. Gonna bring it right up to the straw. See where the yellow's on that sleeve now. We'll cover that up with the brown with the brown just by going real carefully and close to it. And just keep dry brushing back and forth. We'll just keep going back and forth, back and forth. Always go to a new area, let the previous area dry, and just keep going around. Just keep grabbing a little more and brushing it out on your paper. And come and brush on your piece. That's a little wet, so I gotta brush that out. And just do my little half circles and work it right up to his chin, right up to the yellow. So when you start to get a shiny area like that right there, hopefully you can see that that's too wet. So I'm actually gonna go move over to a different area and let that dry. Just brushing away. Oh, I had jury duty two days this week, but it got canceled, so I didn't have to do that. So that's the jury duty saga again for the month. One more time. No, I got one more time on the 30th. Six times, so. <laughs> well, last week it was, um, last week it was, um, I wasn't picked. I got dismissed it. Yeah, it was 104 that was able to get dismissed. The rest were all picked, so I was lucky that day. And the other day, the um, they were all ca canceled or um, settled. 
or you know, plea bargained, I guess you could say, the one was. and So that's been an interesting experience. There was five in one day and all, none of them made it. They were all either canceled or bargained or um, one issue or another. Have you had a sip for one yet? No, I haven't had the sip for one yet. Like ever? No. So I should be good for three years now. Because <laughs> there's a shortage. Yeah, because there's a shortage. I think there's... Shouldn't be a shortage because I know quite a few people that have never had it and I've had it, this is my fourth time. It's like every three years. So I just probably brought that a little too far away. I was holding it against me. So I'll bring it back in the screen here. Just brushing back and forth. Building that um, medium brown up. And this takes a little while because it's such a flat surface, but you can still um, dry brush a flat surface. It just takes a little, little more patience. Courtney's been working on box sizing because the shipping, um, anything over a cubic a square foot, um, cubic foot the shipping gets really high so we have some really nice pieces of bisque that are on our Brenda's brush strokes and bisque and we have others that we'd like to add but um, they all don't just fit in a 12 by 12 box so she's adjusted the size of the box and maybe made it like eight inches by what something so that they they still equal the cubic foot in the end So we can still ship the bigger pieces, but hopefully at the cheaper rate. So we're trying to pour and clean um, more bisque to get it on there so it's available. Instead of just a lot of little pieces. And we're just going to keep dry brushing here. And I put my pumpkins that I did at my class out on the front step instead of keeping them in the house at the plasma cutting class and welding. That was fun. That was last week. We'll just keep brushing back and forth. I got the net on the pond to keep some of the leaves out as they're falling. I think the majority of them should end up falling here in the next week, so that should keep the pond a little bit cleaner and the fish a little bit happier. Through winter anyway, so they make it. I'm just dry brushing back and forth. And I'll probably switch over to her once I get um, further. Get back around here. Because then this one can dry and we can get some on her. Keep going back and forth, back and forth, and slowly build it up, little thin layers at a time. And we're working our way back around to the front, and that's a little too thick, so I'm going to brush that out. Next week we have to set up 
I think on Wednesday I have to go take a little load to the craft show for Saturday. Because it's already that time of the year. November is the big craft show month. All the Christmas shoppers. Does anyone make ceramic Christmas gifts for everyone or do you just make it for yourself? So let's see, we got a few more people join us. We have Carol and Ann and Russ Witha, um, Timothy and Trudy. Welcome you guys, glad you could join us. So we're just working on our um, October fall harvest box, dry brushing our scarecrows. And they take a little bit longer because they're a little bit bigger pieces. But we should be able to get them um, done in the four, four classes that we have. And then we'll start. Um, by then you'll have your November box if you're subscribed or purchased it. I'm just going to keep brushing back and forth. Just keep building it up. And um, the medium brown is a, a shade darker than his um, face. But if you don't like that, you could do use another color too. It doesn't matter. I was a little too colorful with my first set, so I toned it down and just stayed with the browns. <laughs> what? That's how you describe yourself? Too colorful? Yep, too colorful. That's what my family told me. I look like clowns. Well, Cordy says they look like clowns, but they were just colorful scarecrows. They were on a budget. They couldn't get coordinating clothes. They were spring scarecrows. So. so we'll just keep brushing it back and forth. So we also have the videos on YouTube. If you're not able to watch them on Facebook, you can go on YouTube and watch them. And if you subscribe, then you'll get any you'll get a message then that the, a new one's been uploaded anytime we upload anything new. We're caught up. And Courtney says we're caught up, and I think she'll be posting this one sometime tomorrow. And she usually posts the supply list with it. Um, if you're having problems, you can always message, and we'll get back to you. It may not be right away because our message volume is growing, and we both do work during the day too. So, but you will hear from us. And if you don't, and we missed you, just send a second message because we are getting more and more messages. So it's easy for someone to get buried, and we don't want that to happen. I'm just brushing back and forth. I don't want to get too much of the medium brown in the crease there. I want to leave that um, so it's darker for the shadowing and shading. And So I'm kind of going with it instead of against it because I don't want to get too much on his pants. Um, but if I did, I could cover it up with the pants color. It's not that big of a deal. And we'll just keep going in these little areas here. And then I think we'll switch over to the girl and let him dry. And then we can come back to him again. So even though it's fairly smooth, you can still still dry brush on smooth surfaces. You just take your time and build it up nice and slow. If you notice a, a dark, shiny spot, then it's it's too wet. Let it let it dry and and come back to it. We'll just kind of keep brushing away here. I want a little more brown closer to my yellow there on his little cuffs. So some of my local ladies came and painted on Tuesday night and that was a lot of fun because we lost our shop, local shop here in town um, in August so we're kind of homeless, so we're just meeting up in my basement and painting as a group. 
it's a little tight but hopefully in the spring we'll have a we'll have a building we're working on so it'll give everyone more space and me more time and I got lots of greenware that's poured that I need to get clean just to get on our web page and um, wanted to get some videos painted to go of painting the pieces to go with them but just isn't enough time in my day. One of the ladies did unbox her box here and it was quite fun to watch how excited she was as she unboxed the box and found all the little goodies in there. So it's nice to know that it was really appreciated how we're um, boxing our boxes up and having the extras and um, the extra gift that's in it and so that was a lot of fun to actually see someone else opening it and I'm um, enjoying what was in the box so we're gonna switch over we're gonna let that dry now and switch over to our girl and we're just gonna do the same thing with her I'm gonna grab a little more of the medium brown and that was the Duncan OS 471 medium brown and we're just going to keep doing what we were doing. And I'm actually going to take a brush and brush um, the little dust that we got from doing the yellow. Just brush it off a little bit. And we'll start with her sleeve. And get right up to her um, hair, her straw hair. Come right down her cuff. Go right over the twine. We'll get that um, painted later. Come down around in that little area there. And come down around. Let's see, last night when I poured molds, I poured orders. And I also poured Christmas trees for the boxes. Uh, this morning I took the orders out. And tonight I'll take the trees out and punch ho holes in them for the lights. When I'm... Um, through here, we'll do that. <laughs> we well, <laughs> we we will do the penguin, and then I'll let you go on the road back home, and I'll do the lights, the hole punching. So I'm just brushing back and forth, trying to get a nice medium brown coat on her sleeve, on her ruffles. Bring it right up to the hair. Almost down to the crack, crevice where the blouse meets the jumper, but not quite. So Connie says they weren't that bad. I must have missed something. What wasn't too bad, Connie? Your circus scarecrows. Oh, the circus scarecrows. <laughs> uh, she's no. I think you're right, Connie. I side with you. I thought they were okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, so Trudy says most of the Christmas gifts she gives is ceramics. Well, that's great. Um, I usually don't give any because I don't even have enough time to make any for anybody. I've been painting a nativity set for Courtney for about three, four years. <laughs> I uh, know. You have Mary Joseph, the baby, a shepherd, and a shepherd is done. And a sheep. There's two sheep done. It's the big Atlantic um, nativity set. Yeah. I can show you the size of this guy. So this is the large um, sheep for that nativity set. You can tell it's very big. She's giving me directions so you guys can see it. So this is one of the sheep that goes with that set. It's it's, it's big. He's probably twelve, good twelve inches compared to. You can see him compared to the scarecrow. So that's one of one of those. I think there's a standing sheep done. Mary, Joseph, the baby, baby G, and baby Jesus. And I think I'm working on a king. So, but that's been like a, I think this is the fourth year, because I um, was trying to do a couple 
like a piece a year, but I haven't even touched it this year. So, so we're just going to keep going with our medium brown. And um, that nativity is all dry brushed too. So it'll be a good piece for her to have when I'm no longer around. I'm just going to keep going with my um, uh, my medium brown here. I'm going to turn it sideways to get in that little the little area of her blouse under her jumper there. One of the ladies that came on Wednesday, she was working on her scarecrows, and I think she did her blouse in more of a cream. Creamy yellow color, which was really pretty too. And she base coated it in, um, I think it was saddle brown. And that's a nice um, base coating color too for dry brushing these guys. So you can do whatever works for you. We don't set no rules. Whatever works for you. Whatever you like, your personal preference. These are just basic basic painting to help you learn and show you some things and why I do what I do and hopefully that helps you when you're alone in painting you can make a decision well I know I need to paint the deeper part first because of the paint will get on the higher part if I do the higher part first and I like to use like usually the three shades like on the hair we use the black was your first shade and then near mustard was your next sh middle shade, and then the um, daffodil was your lightest shade. So you kind of, and you could also go with three shades, like I could have had three shades of yellow. I could have put a lighter yellow on there yet, too, if you wanted. But then that would have been another color in the box, and we tried to um, limit the amount of new colors on the boxes, too, so they don't get too expensive if you want to buy extra paint. So a lot of thought goes into the boxes. We'll keep brushing back and forth. And I think our November box has four new colors again. That's not too bad. And then four reused colors. And December, um, um, December is the snowman. And I did figure out, I haven't painted them yet because the moles just came in um, yesterday and I didn't have one of the pieces. I have the other two. But I figured out what colors we'll be using and it'll be four new colors. And we will be um, color washing two of them and then dry brushing them and then we will be painting and antiquing one of them. So a um, couple Something new, not just dry brushing. We'll try to throw stuff, different stuff in always with our boxes. So, let's we'll keep building up this light brown, medium brown on her, just like we did with him. Bringing it right up to our straw. I'm sorry that he's, she's turned upside down, but that's the best way for me to um, try to get worked in there. Sometimes you have to turn your pieces like that so you can, and whatever works best for you to get the paint on there. Not necessarily that they're right side up. You have to turn them so you can get the color where it needs to go. That's too much, so i got to brush that out. You can see that looks real wet, and you, it shouldn't be looking real wet like that. We'll come here to the middle and dry brush that out. And to bring it right up to her chin, let a little bit of the black showing. And come right over to the, her other arm. Now I did get some brown on her hair, but we can um, touch that up. We'll do that when we're done with all the brown. In case we get more. So the, the color wash is very, it's easy. Um, there used to be a product called color wash. 
Um, you can't get it anymore, so we just kind of just make our own color wash. It's about a 50-50 mix of water and then your base coat color that you want to use. Um, you could even base coat, you could even do the color wash with the black if you wanted. Um, I usually don't, but you can. I use I like to use the color washing on snowmen and penguins. So it's about a 50-50 mixture of your paint to water. And then you brush it on. And then you do an area at a time, maybe about 8 by 8. And then you take a wet sponge and you wipe off all the high areas and let the color down in the deeper areas. So that's kind of your shadowing then. And then it'll have a blue, if you're using blue, it'll have a blue hue to it. If you use purple, it'll have a purple hue to it. And then you just dry brush your colors like you normally would. Um, yep, the, you can let the paint mix um, in, a in a jar or a bottle. I usually mix mine right up in a pint jar because I mix up quite a bit at one time. That way I don't run short on a project. And since I'm doing shows, I, I probably go through more than the average person. So it's It stays good, good as long as you use it or until you use it. We got to get in her little underneath her jumper here. We forgot about that. I've been talking too much. And I usually have a couple blues and different blues. I have a bright blue and I have a navy blue. Um, I'll have a purple and a turquoise. I just um, like the different hues that they that they give when you use the color wash, which you could base coat too with those colors. Um, you don't wouldn't have to necessarily color wash with it. It's just that like with the snowman, you're wiping that um, blue off of the high areas so it doesn't take as much dry brushing to cover up the blue because you, you're exposing some of the white again. So hopefully that makes sense. And we'll be doing that in December. So, And we wanted to do the um, Christmas box in November, so if you... You could either display it for December or you could give it as a gift. That way, if we're painting it in December, you wouldn't be able to do that. So that's why we did our Christmas box in November. Kind of why we did our October box in September, too. Just to, so it's ready for that month. We'll just keep going and building this up. We'll get her to about where he was and then we'll switch back to him. Um, dry brushing is a slow process. It doesn't happen real fast, so um, you kind of ha have to have patience for it. You don't just sit down and paint your piece and you're done. You do have to keep building up those thin layers. That's what gives it that nice soft, soft look, but yet you have lots of shading. We're going to just keep and you want to get um, in between the bottom of her dress and her um, straw, too. Don't forget to go down there. And we'll keep going and getting under her jumper here. Kind of work that up to her chin a little more. You can see how the smaller brush works better in those little bitty areas like that. You wouldn't want to be using a big brush like this in that little area because you'd have that medium brown everywhere. So you do want to switch to a littler brush. About a three works really well for the little areas like that. And we do have brushes on our web page too if you need brushes. And if there's something that's not listed on there, you can just give us a message and we can um, see if we can order it. And then we could order it with next month's order because we already ordered um, for the November box yesterday. So, But those month, the month really goes by fast. Um, our November box will actually be our fifth month of doing this, so that's pretty cool. It seems like it's only been a month or two and it's going to be the fifth month. 
Courtney's counting on her fingers. <laughs> July, August, September, October. Yeah. November will be the fifth box. I felt like this one. Oh, you felt like this was the fifth one already? Oh, I didn't think it was that that long. <laughs> it went fast for me. So it, fast and slow at the same time. Right. So our November box will actually be our fifth box since we started, so that's pretty cool. I'm just brushing back and forth. I'm going to get that color built up a little bit. So you can see I'm getting less and less black, and my brown is becoming more and more brown, but yet I have black in all my crevices, which is giving um, dimension to my shirt. And that's what you want to do. You just want to keep building it up slowly and slowly and carefully when you have such a little area like this. And then you want to keep turning, um, let, let the place you were just working in dry, and then go to your next area. And then grab a little more and move to the next area. And now these other areas are drying, see that's, that's good, you want your paint to dry in between and it'll, it'll absorb the color better when you come back around. We'll just keep turning her. And she's looking actually pretty good. I think I'm going to switch back to the little boy. So let's see, who else do we have? Oh, Paula joined us and Dorinda. So glad you guys are joining us. That's great. Hope you're enjoying this. We're going to. So now, um, when I look at this, I can still see black through some of my brown which I do want to see the black where the creases are and where there would be shadowing. But like this is a high spot, I really don't want to see that black through there. So I, I want to um, paint that some more, dry brush that some more. But now where there's like a little fold in his shirt, I do want some of that um, black there. So I'm just going to dry brush across it and yet I can still get the top of that sleeve and get some of that black on yet so it's more um, solid co colored covered. And I gotta turn him the other way so I can see here. I'm gonna work that down into that crevice just a little bit more. It's a pretty dark. I don't want it quite that dark. And we'll get some more on the underside of the ruffle so it's not quite as black, but we want more on the edge of the ruffle than um, towards the straw because we want it darker towards the straw because there would be more shadow there. So that area of that shirt looks pretty good right there and we'll just keep turning around. Now you can see I can still see black through my main area here and I don't want to see that. But I want the black along my edges and my creases. So we'll just mainly do the high part here. And just get that a little a little more better coverage yet. And we don't worry about the string around his arm. We'll get that touched up later. So now the rest of that sleeve's looking pretty good. It's more solid brown through the middle and a little bit less with some black on the edges. That gives your shadowing. I'll go to the part that's underneath his pants here and get that a little bit, a little bit more brown in there because you can see like right there is a black. You can still see the black through there. We, we don't want to really see the black through there. Now I did get brown up on his hair, but that's okay. We can touch that up. And we'll come over to the other little area here and get some more brown in there. But you can see we have this nice shadowing all the way around around that. Because that shirt is deeper than those pants, there would be a darker, it would be darker there. And we'll get the main area of this sleeve a little more because we have some black coming through yet. And 
and just keep turning it. And I need a little more brown. How are we doing on time, Courtney? Eight o'clock. All right. We can probably get to a point again where I can give you guys homework. Um, did you guys like homework? Did anyone do homework? Did you work on your mustard color um, during the week or not? Is that not a good idea? You'd rather see me um, paint the whole piece, the entire step of it? Or do you like the homework idea? Oh, and Marge joined us. Hello, Marge. So I'm just working my way back around here. Get a little more in, on his shirt that's under his pants. Still letting... Dorinda says yes, she would like homework. All right, well, we'll have homework then. I think the local pro... Yep, they worked on theirs Tuesday, or yep, Tuesday night when they were here. So that's looking pretty good. Get a little more on that high part of his sleeve. I can still see some black through there. And you can see some black through too, that's okay. So well, we'll put him aside and we'll take a look at her. And it looks like she needs a little bit more on her sleeves and then we'll have her up to speed with him. At least it's fun homework and it's not like school homework. Um, Courtney asked if the next box is easier to paint. The tree is fairly easy. Um, the trucks are probably about the same as these because of all the trim on um, the bumper and the, um, the one I did a little easier than the other one. Um, the one with the tree in it, I actually put Actually, the one without the tree, I painted the white walls of the tires, and those are a royal pain in the butt. Because not only do you have to get the white wall equal on one tire, but you have four tires, and Courtney's giving it to me to show to you. So this is um, the shelf sitter truck, and I did put white walls on that one compared to the other one. I did not. So not only do you have to get the white wall equal on this whole tire, but this tire has to match that tire as well as much as you can. Um, so this one doesn't have the white wall, it just has the silver hubcap in the middle. Um, so this one with the tree, I painted out all the areas. Um, the windows are gray, the um, grill is silver, the hubcaps are silver. And then he was, um, he's not dry brushed or anything. He was just sealed and then the snow and glitter put on him. The, tr the tree was dry, was dry brushed. And that's how we did the first tree. Um, then this one is a little different in that I painted it, but then I antiqued it with black. So you can see in, in the crevices there's more black. It just gave it a little more um, dimension and character. So that's the difference. And you could also let more black on it than I did. I didn't want to let too much because I didn't want it to look like too old of a truck. Even though it's an old truck, I wanted it to look like a kind of a newer old truck, not all rusted out. Um, and then this red is, they're actually the same red, but this red is darker because of the black that went over it. So it's just a way to show you that um, even though I use the same color of red, that they can still look different by using different techniques. So that's how um, how we'll paint those trucks up. And this one can be an ornament, or you can not put that string in there and put a light in there, and it, it can sit on the counter too. Now the trucks, um, if they're, they're, the tea lights won't fit in these because they're narrower than the tea lights are too big, so that won't work. Um, I don't know if you can get little little bitty battery operated get lights like that get the like fairy, fairy lights or something, like maybe a fairy light set would fit up in there. 
Um, so that's how our trees will look. Our truck and our tree. And then this is the single truck. And then this one I put the silver on the bumper, on the side steps, and on the doorknobs too. So he's, he, he, they're the same, but they're different. And then we also have a tree for in that box. And this will be the tree in our November box. It's the Noel 341A. And he's uh, base coated black and then dry brushed with three, three shades of green. And then he is sealed. And then we put in the lights. And then you put on the snow and the glitter. And all that will be in the pin lights and the glitter and the snow will all be in, your, in that November box. And then he has a base that he sits on. And the base also comes in the in um, that November kit, and we will be um, that that I paint the holly and dry brush it and the berries, and then um, then I come back and paint the silver, and then it's um, sealed, and then the snow and the glitter goes on, and then we wire the um, light through it, and we'll do all that um, online. But I also shared from Glazers today um, their tree wiring of how, how, how to um, do this so it's not hard. You also have that um, in the BIS box. I shared that to the BIS box. Oh, I can actually show them sitting that on there. So then um, the tree and the light, it'll fit right on there just like that. Oh, she's going to plug it in for us even, maybe. And then it comes um, with the light kit. That's our gift to the subscribers. And it actually has a switch that you can turn it on instead of having to unplug it from the wall. Okay. Courtney's got it plugged in. I'm not sure if you guys can see the... She'll maybe flip the lights off. So that will be... That's our November box, our tree. And then the two trucks. And you can see he's lit up. It's very pretty. It's not too big. It's just a nice desk size or little tabletop size. So we got to watch so we don't have yellow on the cord there. So that's just a little quickie to show you of the, the actual box that's coming for November if you subscribed or if you want to do the one-time purchase. Um, that's what that's looking like. And we did have the unboxing video that showed that too. So, so we'll get back to our little scarecrows here. And we'll get her. She's looking pretty good. I think I want just a little more of the light brown. Or medium brown, I'm sorry. They like the white walls? Oh, you're going to be cursing at those white walls. <laughs> I'm not even telling a lie. <laughs> uh, and I haven't found out an easy way to do them either. If they would have, when they made the molds, if they would have put a groove in the tire where that white wall um, should be or could be, it would have saved everybody a lot of headache. Um, so there's no, there's no indication where the white wall would be. So you, you just have to like paint it and then... Um, go back and touch it up with the black, and then touch it up with the white, and touch it up with the black, and touch it up with the silver. Um, I wasn't going to do it <laughs> because of that, but the white wall kind of makes makes those guys, so I, I did it, and, and we can do it, and I just want to give you the heads up. Don't get frustrated with it. You know, you can try it, and um, it just take just take your, it'll just be patience, and the, big, the biggest thing will be to make the two look alike. You don't even have to worry about the other side. The other side, as long as they look like um, as close to the other side as possible. Um, if they're off a little bit, it won't be obvious because it is on the other side. But the, the two on one side, you got to get those two matching. Otherwise, it's very obvious that they don't match. So... But, I mean, it's not that it's hard. It's just that it's a little time-consuming because you got to um, touch up to get them both the same size because you, you don't have a... You have nothing, a marker to go by for how, how wide to do them. Um, I don't know. I thought about making a template. I'm just not sure if that... I don't know. We'll see what we can come up with, maybe. Um, otherwise, you have to freehand it, and that's it's a little difficult. Huh? Of course, he says it wouldn't happen. I agree. On one of them, I painted them black. Hmm, but I stuck with it and did it for the box, so I don't know that I would do every one that I make for a show like that just because it's so time-consuming. 
but maybe the more you do, the easier it gets too, and you figure out a trick trick for it. Um, I have a circle template. I might try to match that up to the tire and see if we can create a template. We'll see. Bring them over for me to paint. <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, that's an idea. Maybe we could take like a um, a punch, a, a stamping, a card punch, and punch that um, through the masking tape, and then um, tape that on there. That might be a good idea. Something like that. You'd like paint it white and then cover it and paint your black. Yep, or paint the black and then put that template on there, and then um, put the masking tape and then paint it white through that hole. Oh, yeah. So I'm just gonna. We'll try to work on something to make that easier to do those white walls because um, that, that really does make the truck, gives it a lot more character. A lot of those old tires also had the um, color of the truck right next to that hubcap in a real thin um, color. I didn't get that creative because <laughs> that would just be another more touching up when I was trying to get it done so we could do the unboxing video. But you, But you could. We'll see if we can figure something out with the with those white walls to make them easier. So I'm just gonna touch this up a little bit more, and then I think her her blouse is looking about as good as his. And let's see, we can do homework. We will do. I think we'll have you guys start with the um, her dress. And let me see, one's got a rust hat and a green hat. And we'll just we'll just do a little bit of homework, not too much. Um, we're gonna start with the rust, and that'll be the Doc Holiday DH28 Rust. And you could probably do it on his hat and on her dress. And I'm just gonna use the same brush I had, that'll be okay might want a little bit bigger one. Um, you'll want a smaller one when you're starting to do her where the little um, jumper tabs are and you'll want to just dry brush this whole jumper with the rust and you'll just go back and forth and one, once you get those little um, jumper straps you could switch to a bigger brush. Um, so I'll do the back jumper straps here. And you don't want too big a one doing those straps because then your light brown will get all um, dirty with the rust. So you kind of want to, like a size 3 seems to be just perfect. And then you could switch to a little bit bigger one. And I got a size 5 round. And then you can just dry brush her whole, her whole jumper. And if you want her um, bloomers to be the same color, as um, they actually have more rust on them and then the after the rust the jumper will get um, the hot orange but if you can do the whole jumper and his whole and his whole hat with the rust that's where we can pick up um, next week so if you can do um, his whole hat with rust and her whole jumper and her whole bloomers with rust um, you just want a nice base base coat of that on it just like we did with the um, just like when we did pumpkins, we did the pumpkin. We didn't. We did pumpkins on the very last box. Yeah, you did the one last. So you just want the whole, whole jumper a nice um, rust color. And I can um, do that. Maybe I probably won't have time till Sunday to actually put the degree of rust. But you're pretty much doing it just like you did the sleeve, well, leaving only a little bit of black um, in the, in the depth in the in the crevices. Otherwise, the whole jumper and the bloomers will be the rust, and you can go right up to the shoes, this underneath here too, and just get it a nice nice rust color dry brushed. And I and I can do a a 
degree of how much rust and do a picture for you, but it probably won't be Sunday because we're going to get the molds on Saturday and I work tomorrow. Um, then I'll post a, a picture just like we did with the straw with the mustard and that way you'll have an idea of how how rust colored to get it but you're gonna get it fairly rust colored like the, the whole dress underneath here and then her whole bloomers and then you'll do his whole hat as well his whole hat you can skip the patch if you want and you just go right up to your um, straw you might want to switch to the littler brush back to like the three to get around your sunflower and you can just work it in there real real gently in between the petals and that's on his hat um, her hat is green if you wanted to do her hat you could do that with the Lexington green so you just want to work your um, rust right up to your petals and you can see that that covers that um, mustard and the daffodil right up and you just work it right up to it and then once you have that worked up you can go back to like a size 5 and then you can dry brush the rest of it you want to go across your brim because you want to let that um, crevice there to be darker so you just you'll go across it and then you could do the whole the whole hat and you can um, do those little C strokes and you can just nudge it right up up to his head you can leave a little bit of black in there and you just nudge it up and then just keep brushing back and forth across the brim so I'll, I'll try to do that on Sunday and post a picture of, of what the what you're going to aim for but it'll be a pretty much solid rust just like it is on his sleeves and you can do that on his hat and on her jumper and on her bloomers and then I'll post pictures like of the bloomers and of his hat so you can see how how much color that you want to get of that rust on there but you'll probably want like a size three um, three a flat or round and then about a size three a five round for these bigger areas and you can go right up up to the patch you don't have to actually do the patch because we'll do that in another color you can go across it and across that way that's that's the way you're leaving the darkness um, around it so I'll just grab a little more see if we can get a little more color on there yet we'll just and you just keep brushing down in there too kind of going across across those ruffles trying to get the underside of them and you just brush real kind of gent gently you don't have to brush real hard and when you get down to underneath her dress you just just like with the brim of his underneath his hat you just keep kind of like little c-strokes I'm doing and then that's too much, so I'm going to wipe that right off of my finger. I still got too much. And you brush across the ruffles here. And if you get it on her shoes, that's okay. We can, we'll be covering that up with the brown. So I'm just going back and forth. Kind of want to work it right down into the um, crevice here. Come back around to the top. And you just slowly work your way all the way around, all the way around. And when you come back, it'll be dry, and then you can start over again. And then if it's you get two or three coats on her, then you can go back and do his hat. Um, so I think that's probably about it for how far we'll really get this week. Um, you just, so if you want to do homework, go ahead and... Put the rust on her and then we can highlight her with the orange and the hot orange and the orange peel next week and then we'll um, just keep at it and we'll get them done. So once you get the rust on there, the orange will go on really easy, a lot 
a lot easier and faster. It's just this um, first coat that takes takes a little more building up. And if you don't want the orange, um, orange, you could do whatever colors you want to. Just do pick a darker color and do the same thing that we're doing with the rust. Just keep building it up. And then you can have a medium color and you can highlight it. And then a, another lighter color and you can highlight it a little more. I'm just going back and forth on the ruffles. You just keep going until you build build those colors, that color up. So you have a nice, nice rust. And you'll have to go back and forth with that brush. Grab that little brush and get, get on those um, jumper straps. And you'll do the same with his bibs. Um, that's pretty much about it. If that you want to do homework, that's what you can do. It'll probably be later on Sunday when I post the pictures because I'll have to do it on Sunday. Um, that'll give you an idea of how far to go. But it's basically her jumper and her bloomers with the rust. And then his hat with the rust. And you want to use that smaller brush again to get in those between those petals on that, that um, sunflower. And once you get around the back, you have the stem of the flower, and you can just bring it right up to that, too. Or you can brush right across it, and we'll get cover that stem up with the green. That works, too. So you're letting some of the darkness in between the stem and the hat. So you can go across it, or you can wet just slowly uh, merge up to it. And same with down here by his hair. You just slowly... Do those little C strokes and wedge it up to it and it slowly builds it up and you want to let a little bit of black between the yellow and the um, rust of the hat so you have um, color and depth and sh your shadow in there I hope you can see that really well you can see it's building up and then you can come out here and just go across so just work your way all the way around do his whole hat you do the same thing up here by this straw so there you go. I'll post pictures later on Sunday of, of the degree of rust that we're going to um, aim for. If you guys have questions, you can always send me a picture and shoot me the question, and I'll get back to you. Um, Saturday will be gone, so you probably won't be answering questions till quite late on Saturday. Otherwise, have a good week, and if you have any questions, just let us know, and happy painting this week. Thank you.